Have you ever heard that the hippopotamus is a cousin of the pig? If so, you're not alone. This large, barrel-shaped creature has often been associated with pigs due to its hefty size and snouted face. But hold on to your seats because we're about to debunk that myth. Here's the twist. The hippopotamus isn't really a relative of the pig. This might come as a shock given the outward resemblance, but it's true. So, if not a pig, what is the closest relative of this majestic beast? The answer lies not on land but in the waters of Africa. Recent discoveries have brought to light that the hippopotamus shares a more intimate kinship with African whales and dolphins, the cetaceans. That's right, our hefty friend is closer to these marine mammals than any land-dwelling creature. Quite the plot twist, isn't it? Now let's throw another curveball your way. Picture the manatee, a creature that one might argue bears a striking resemblance to the hippopotamus, with its rotund body and semi-aquatic lifestyle. You'd think they'd be close relatives, right? Interestingly, the manatee is more closely related to the elephant than it is to the hippopotamus. The manatee and the elephant share a common ancestor making them relatives in the grand family tree of life. So where does this leave our misunderstood friend the hippopotamus? It seems to exist in a category of its own, a sort of terrestrial whale if you will. Its unexpected lineage underscores the fascinating complexity of life's interconnected web, reminding us that appearances can be deceiving, and that the truth often lies beneath the surface. So the hippopotamus as it turns out is a terrestrial whale of sorts. While the ancestors of the hippopotamus had the option to venture into the ocean, they chose not to. It's a decision that has puzzled scientists for generations. It's not that they couldn't have swum, after all, their cetacean cousins, the whales and dolphins, took the plunge. But the hippopotamus, it seems, had a different plan. Let's journey back in time, 54 million years to be exact. Picture a world where the hippopotamus is just beginning to carve its niche. But there's a problem, they're not exactly adept at swimming. So, what do they do? They improvise. Over millions of years, the hippopotamus develops a unique method of underwater locomotion. It's not swimming, and it's not walking. It's something entirely different. Picture a child too short to touch the bottom of a swimming pool, bouncing along the bottom in a series of leaps and bounds. That's precisely what a hippopotamus does. It uses the riverbed as a launch pad, propelling itself forward in a sort of underwater ballet. Now you might be wondering, how does a creature as large as a hippopotamus manage this feat? It's a delicate balance of weight and buoyancy. The heavy, dense bones of the hippopotamus give it the necessary weight to sink to the riverbed. But sinking isn't enough. They also need to be able to rise to the surface to breathe. That's where their fat comes into play. Much like a life jacket, the fat of a hippopotamus provides buoyancy. It allows them to float just enough so they're not stuck on the riverbed. But there's another element at play here. Their large lungs. The lungs of a hippopotamus are like built-in air tanks, helping them adjust their buoyancy and control their depth. This unique method of locomotion, this bouncing along the riverbed, it's oddly endearing. It's like watching a toddler take its first steps, albeit in a more fluid environment. And it's this method that gives the hippopotamus an almost lunar grace. So while the hippopotamus might not be winning any swimming races against its cetacean cousins, it has certainly carved its own path. A path that is uniquely hippopotamus. A path that is uniquely terrestrial. A path that is, in its own right, quite majestic. Their unique method of underwater locomotion gives them an almost lunar grace. The hippopotamus is not all water, it's semi-aquatic, leading a significant life both in and out of water. Now this lifestyle demands some unique adaptations. Let's delve into the fascinating semi-aquatic existence of the hippopotamus. Having evolved over millions of years, the hippopotamus is perfectly suited to its semi-aquatic lifestyle. A key adaptation is the positioning of its eyes and nostrils. Unlike most mammals where the eyes and nostrils are located on the front or sides of the head, the hippopotamus has them placed high on the head. This means that when it's submerged in water, a hippopotamus can still keep a watchful eye on its surroundings and breathe comfortably, without needing to expose much of its body. Much like a submarine periscope, the eyes of a hippopotamus are always on the lookout. Whether it's to spot a potential threat, or just to keep tabs on what's happening on the riverbank, these high-set eyes are a crucial tool for survival. Their unique position allows the hippopotamus to see above the water's surface while remaining mostly submerged, a perfect example of nature's ingenuity. Now, what about those nostrils? They're not just placed high on the head for fun. This positioning is all about survival. With nostrils located high up, the hippopotamus can take in air even when the majority of its body is underwater. 
This is a key adaptation for an animal that spends so much time submerged. But there's more. The nostrils of a hippopotamus are not just for breathing, they also play a vital role in communication. When a hippopotamus is submerged, it can close its nostrils to prevent water from entering. Then, when it surfaces it can forcefully exhale, creating a distinctive snorting sound. This sound serves as a form of communication, helping hippos to establish territory, warn off rivals, or even attract mates. These adaptations allow the hippopotamus to submerge most of its body, while keeping a watchful eye on its surroundings and breathing comfortably. It's a remarkable testament to nature's ability to equip creatures with the perfect tools for their environment. The hippopotamus boasts some truly remarkable anatomical features. Let's dive a little deeper into these fascinating traits. Firstly, let's focus on the eyes of the hippopotamus, which are nothing short of extraordinary. Much like a pair of built-in goggles, a transparent membrane shields their eyes, allowing them to see underwater while protecting them from the harsh aquatic environment. This membrane is clear, so it doesn't obstruct their vision, but it's also tough, acting as a barrier against debris and potential irritants. This means they can take an underwater peek at their surroundings without any discomfort or risk of eye injury. Next, we have the hippopotamus's nostrils, an example of nature's engineering at its finest. These aren't your ordinary nostrils, they're more like two mud slugs in a harmonious duet and they play a crucial role in the hippopotamus's aquatic lifestyle. They have the ability to close when relaxed, a mechanism that prevents water from entering their respiratory system. This feature is somewhat reminiscent of a dolphin's blowhole, albeit with a different approach. The hippopotamus must actively flare its nostrils to breathe, making every breath a conscious effort. This is a crucial adaptation for a creature that spends a significant portion of its life submerged in water. And here's the part that might surprise you. These anatomical features allow the hippopotamus to sleep underwater. Yes, you heard that right. A hippopotamus can take a nap in the depths of a river, periodically surfacing to breathe without fully waking up. It's a delicate dance between sleep and survival, between the need for rest and the instinct to breathe. This unique ability is made possible by their distinctive nostrils and the automatic process of surfacing for air, even in a state of unconsciousness. In the world of animal anatomy, the hippopotamus truly stands apart with its unique features finely tuned for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. These features even allow the hippopotamus to sleep underwater, periodically surfacing to breathe without fully waking up. Despite its aquatic adaptations, the hippopotamus is also a creature of the land. This might come as a surprise to many, considering the extensive time these semi-aquatic mammals spend in water, but it's indeed true. When the sun starts to set, and the heat of the day begins to wane, the hippopotamus ventures out of the water and onto the dry land. This isn't a casual stroll in the park mind you, the hippopotamus can travel up to six miles in a single night in search of food. This nightly excursion is a testament to the hippopotamus's remarkable adaptability and endurance. But why does the hippopotamus choose to live on land, especially when it seems so well suited to an aquatic existence? Here's the interesting part. The hippopotamus doesn't choose the cool wet climates of cities like Seattle or London. No, it prefers some of the hottest regions on earth. Places where the sun blazes down with an intensity that would make most creatures seek shade. It's in these regions, specifically sub-Saharan Africa, that the hippopotamus thrives. You might wonder why would a creature choose such harsh living conditions? Well the answer lies in the hippopotamus's diet. Being herbivores they rely on the grasslands that flourish in these regions. The African plains provide an abundance of food, and the rivers offer respite from the heat. It's a delicate balance, a dance of survival that the hippopotamus has perfected over millions of years. But don't be deceived. Living in such extreme conditions is not a walk in the park. The scorching sun, the sparse shade, the relentless heat, these elements present a myriad of challenges for the hippopotamus. They must keep their skin moist to prevent it from cracking, they need to find enough food to sustain their enormous bodies, and they have to protect themselves and their young from predators. This presents its own set of challenges but that's a story for another time. So, until then, let's appreciate the remarkable adaptability of this terrestrial whale, the misunderstood hippopotamus.